Welcome, my friends, to the Sage Gray Radio Hour, your home for free and critical thinking, and I'm your host, Mike Williams. Tonight, my very special guest is Nicola Barbosa. Nicola is an alternative health practitioner in the field of quantum healing. The process involves using the ancient art of pendulum dowsing, charts, and sacred geometry tools to find and heal the root cause of health issues. And so without further ado, here's the conversation with Nicola. Well, folks, we have a great show, and we're going to take a little bit of a different turn today. My other love is uh, alternative health and wellness. As many of you know, I have a hypnotherapy practice, so this is something that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, every once in a while, I like to step away from the conspiracy research and to talk about alternative health and wellness. And to do that today, Nicola Barbosa is with us, and she's going to take us through her quantum healing practice. And uh, quantum healing, uh, Nicola, based upon what I read off your website, is a healing modality. It involves using the ancient art of pendulum dowsing a series of charts and sacred geometry tools to find and heal the root cause of health issues. So it sounds very, very interesting to me. Um, I did have Chris Kaler on the show about a year ago, and you know maybe we could talk about that a little bit as far as um, I know you're using Chris's protocols. Um, but before we get into all that, how did you end up doing this work? Because this is not common, right? This is something that uh, you're not going to find uh, in abundance as far as people practicing quantum healing. So what what was your journey in life to get to do what you're doing today? Um, well, I grew up in Ireland. Um, I grew up in a big family, five brothers, five sisters, grew up on a farm. So just from a very young age, um, you know, I lived around the natural environment, surrounded by nature. And my mother always, you know, cooked home, cooked food. We rarely ate out maybe on, you know, family occasion. So from a young age, um, you know, I was always inclined towards health. Uh, my mother and my father, um, even though, you know, brought up in a Catholic household and, you know, you know, Ireland is a very Catholic country, um, they did still have a strong belief in healing. Um, so local healers um, would be common in Ireland. Um, so yeah, so grew up um, playing a lot of sport, always into health, went to college for business and recreation management, got my NCF gym instructor. So I was always on that path, um, loved sport, loved nutrition. And then after college, I came over to the US and worked in a different career, kind of got away from that whole aspect. So um, I was looking to um, make the turn and go back into what I love. Um, it just through my own health challenges and um, especially when I had my daughter, my main priority was to keep her healthy as possible, um, preventative health. So just keep her body just purely healthy. So um, I was looking into nutrition and I was listening to lots of podcasts and I came across Chris Kaler on a internet radio show. And the minute I heard him speak and I was, I was blown away by this modality. It just resonated. I was like, oh, wow, I have to do that. So I listened to every interview he had. I um, booked sessions with him to see what it was like. And um, I had great results with that. And he did some healing on my daughter as well. And I seen a big difference in that. And then um, I soon, he, as he had his course available, I jumped on it. So and that's how it started. So I um, haven't looked back. And it's an amazing modality. Now, on your website, you list really a lot of areas of uh, health concerns that your quantum healing technique and your approach can help with. And I was wondering if we could talk about some of that uh, as an example, when somebody comes in and they have uh, anxiety, because I see a lot of clients that come in and they have anxiety issues. How would you address that from a quantum healing perspective? Okay, so when a client comes to me, first of all, I ask them what would we like to work on. Um, give me a list of symptoms, um, signs, symptoms, how long they've had the problem. And so the information is coming from their consciousness. And um, then I just start the whole process of true quantum healing, which is I grab my pendulum um, and I work on the chart. So basically, it's finding out where the problem is within the client's body, what's causing it, and then removing the frequency of that problem. Okay, so that would be the approach for every type of issue that a client would come in? 
Yeah, every type of issue and anxiety, a lot of the time it's related with the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's doing certain clearings in there, um, other energetic clearings within the aura. Um, they may need to be grounded. So, but the whole process is the same for every client that comes to me. Okay, let's, um, another question I had had to do with fibromyalgia because uh, maybe a lot of folks are not aware of this. That is just a label that's given to uh, pain that is not really understood by Western medicine. Um, how would you go about treating somebody that came in and, and has fibromyalgia? You, you do the dowsing and then how does it yeah, work? Yeah, so that? again, I ask them for how they're feeling, how long they've had it, if there was anything particular that happened in their life um, at that time. Sometimes things are connected, um, if there are any other problems going on. And the same thing, I grab the pendulum and first thing we do is ask what question is optimal. So it's very important to ask the right question. Um, you know, even if you don't ask the right question, how are you supposed to get the right information? So it's very important, first of all, to ask the right question. And in the charts and True Content Healing, there's a list of 26 different questions. Okay. So I have to find out what question is optimal for that particular client. So every client is treated as an individual. Um, so it could be, what is the person suffering from? Um, what area is not with um, What's causing the most resistance? So when you ask the right question, it leads me down the path to the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to read off, Nicola, some of the, uh, the areas in which you help clients. Anxiety, grief, feeling overwhelmed, trauma of past life trauma. That's interesting. It's something that is near and dear to my heart. Childhood trauma, fibromyalgia, which we just uh, talked about, aches and pains, digestive disorders, bladder issues after pregnancy, heart issues, psychic attacks, and any other problems. So it's a it's a long list of areas in which a client can get some help from the quantum healing. Now, the question I had, and I know what dowsing is, but some of our listeners may not know what dowsing is. So could you take us through that a little bit, maybe some some background as to why you use it. And I know that you have a background as far as how it's been used in the past and other civilizations and ancient cultures. Maybe if you could explain it a little bit, that would be helpful. Yeah, so Taoism has been around for a very, very long time, thousands of years. Um, you'll get different information on exactly how long it has been around, but there's even um, engravings in caves in Egypt on, on Taoism. So it's been around a very long time. There's many forms of dowsing. There's pendulum dowsing. Um, people can douse with rods, just a stick. My father, he actually dows for the water where we put the well in his home in Ireland. So um, it's just something that intuitively you grow, grow up using um, stick dowsing. So there's many different forms of dowsing. Um, what I use is pendulum dowsing. And um, basically I'm working with my higher self, my consciousness, my source, and I just swing the pendulum. And when I ask what question is optimal for the client, my pendulum will swing to that particular question. And then I'll find out where the problem is within the body. And the same thing, my pendulum will swing to that particular area in the body and then moving on to what's causing the problem. So pendulum dowsing is um, a big aspect of this as well. And it leads us to where the problem is and what's causing the problem. So I'm very familiar with dowsing myself, Nicola, because in my Reiki practice, I will use the pendulum to, I will drop it or hang it over the client's chakras or their energy centers. And the pendulum will actually tell me whether that particular chakra or energy center, so I may refer to it as an energy center, is out of balance. And once I do the Reiki session, I go back with the pendulum and I just hang or drop that pendulum right above the chakras. There's seven major chakras in the body. I can see now that the pendulum is swinging the way it's supposed to be swinging when the chakra is in balance. So when it's out of balance, the, the pendulum might just rock back and forth. It might do nothing. It might spin in reverse. So that's how you know that the chakra is out of balance. So the, the pendulum to me is, is it's very intriguing because... We, let's, let me just put it this way. We are never taught in our culture that these types of approaches actually work. 
that they're meaningful. They're, 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 they're ways in which we can detect issues. And I, I didn't know this until I, I got into Reiki, which was around nine years ago or so. And it became, you know, then it became very obvious to me that uh, this is something that works. So I was wondering now, I don't know whether you want to be able to show this. It's completely up to you. We can uh, put the video into the, uh, into the interview as to how the, the pendulum, the dowsing with the pendulum, how you do it. Is it, is it over the body of the client or is it over the questions that you ask? How, how does that work? Okay, so I have a series of charts. So all the dowsing I do is on the charts. So a lot of my clients, um, they're long distance. So I do it over phone or Skype and okay. anywhere in the US, Europe, um, Africa, China, I've worked on clients. So everything is done long distance, but the pendulum dowsing is done on the series of charts that I have. So it's a bit different to the way that you do it. Um, it's the exact same process. Okay, so uh, the charts, what do the charts reflect? In other words, is it um, a chart of the body or is it a chart of some sacred geometry? What are the charts comprised of? Okay, so the charts are comprised of a list of questions that we spoke about. Okay. Uh, it also breaks down the physical body and energetic body. So I'll have a list of all the different systems within the body. And then those systems are further broken down in their own chart as well. So for example, if I'm working on the digestive system, um, first of all, my pendulum will lead me to that system. And then I have a separate chart listing every area within the digestive system. So let's say, um, you came to me and you had some stomach problems. So my pendulum could swing to, um, your small intestine or your large in, your large, um, colon. And then, um, I'd move on to find out where the problem is, or sorry, what's causing the problem. So uh, on my charts, there's a list of problems or what we call stressors. So then there's hundreds of different possibilities listed in those problems. And then that's where I find out what's causing the problem. So it could be anything from a virus, a bacteria, a parasite, um, any loads of different dish, different problems could come up. Okay. So is it possible to, um, just to maybe read off an example of some of the questions that would be asked, I guess we could just stick with, uh, digestive issues, or if there's another health concern you'd like to you think is a better example, we can go there. Just so that the audience gets an idea of um, the questions that are asked and how you're able to hone in on the on the actual issue. Okay, yeah, so an example of some of the questions are what area is not within the body. So sometimes an area is energetically missing. So if someone's physical body is missing, some of the symptoms could be to just feel disconnected, they don't know what's going on, and just energetically the physical body is missing. Um, also a particular area of the body could be missing. So if their liver is missing energetically, then that's not going to function to 100% capacity. Um, sometimes a client's brain could be missing energetically. So it could have brain fog or, you know, just some problems going on there. Um, another example of a question is um, emotions. So I have an emotions chart and there's all different positive and negative emotions in there. So that'll, um, you know, hone in on what emotional problems are going on within the client. And that could be connected to something physically that's going on as well. Um, another example of a question is um, what's jeopardizing the health of the client? So it could be just some particular problem within their body, like um, an excess of sodium and calcium could be within their joints, and then it's causing joint problems, it's causing pain. So these different questions will lead me to different problems for that specific client. Another question could be what area is failing? So their digestive system, for example, could be failing. So my pendulum will swing to the area within the digestive system. Let's say it's the ascending colon and the problem is a parasite. Then I will go to the parasite chart and find out what parasite is causing the problem. So it could be a leishmania, could be a tapeworm, could be many different parasites. Okay. So, and when you say that the physical body, a piece of the physical body is missing, what do you mean by that? It's just the energy component of the physical body. So it's missing. Um, could be any different area. Could be somebody's uterus that's missing. Then they have a problem conceiving. Um, so it could be any particular area of the body that's missing. It could be a chakra that's missing, the zero chakra or their entire chakra system. So then, you know, just energetically they feel off. 
So it's just the energy part of their body is disconnected from their physical body. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I understand. All right. So uh, now the questions when you ask them and you hold or dangle the, the pendulum over the questions, how do you know whether the question, well, what the answer is to the question, I guess, what does the pendulum do to lead you to do the next question or to lead you to the next conclusion? Okay, so after I douse on what question is optimal for the client, I'll go to another set of charts, which is called the master charts. And that's where every area of the physical body is broken down. So for example, if um, my pendulum swung to where is the most congestion, then I'd go to the master chart. And on that chart, I would ask where is the most congestion within the client. So then it could um, swing to the digestive system. So then I'll go on to the digestive system chart. It's a separate chart. And I'll ask where is the most congestion within Mike's digestive system. So it could lead me to your small intestine. And then after I find out the area where the problem is, it's in your small intestine, then I'll go to my stressor or my problems chart. And then I'll douse, I'll swing my pendulum and my pendulum will lead me to what's the problem within your small intestine. So okay. Okay. so, so you go from a macro, I, I'm sorry. So you go from a macro uh, level and then it sounds like what's happening is you're peeling the onion back and you're going into a micro level. You're putting it through a funnel and narrowing. That's, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's a great description. Yeah. So then once I find out where the problem is, what's causing the problem, then I use sacred geometry tools. So um, a lot of healers, they use their hands in healing. I still use my hands, but I'm holding the sacred geometry tool. So it's all words and intent. So basically, if um, let's say there was a bacteria within your small intestine or the client's small intestine, basically I grab my Vesca Pisces. This is the sacred geometry tool that I use. And with my words and intent, I remove the frequency of that bacteria. So let's say it was E. coli. I just basically remove the frequency of that. All I have to say is E. coli within the client's small intestine falls and that shatters the frequency of the E. coli. Okay. Yeah, right. everything's energy. So it's like an opera singer um, singing and shatters a wine glass. So just that vibration shatters the wine glass. So it works the same in healing. Yeah, that's interesting because um, frequency has been something that has been known for a long time to be able to tackle disease and health issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's been coming more um, common. I see, you know, articles about music shattering cancer frequencies and different sounds. So it's um, interesting. It's been coming, it's coming more common. More information is coming out. So that's great as well. Yeah, we can go back to Rife technology as an example. Um, a lot of it has been suppressed big time. But as you've mentioned, it's starting to really emerge now. More and more people becoming aware of the frequency aspects of life in general. And so with the right frequencies, the the concept is you you will be able to release whatever the disease is or the parasite or the disease the disorder because the frequency disrupts the frequency of that parasite. I use a parasite as an example. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So um, you also bring into this, uh, Nicola, as I was going through your website, life coaching and, and business coaching. So how do you bring in the life coaching aspect of this? What does a client call you or contact you for? What is the issue that they want to try to resolve that has to do with life coaching plus the quantum healing? Um, could be anything from mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. So it could be many problems and then just, you know, um, different feeling overwhelmed, lack of confidence, um, lack of belief in themselves. So it covers many different aspects within their life and their business. Okay. So yeah, so I use a, you know, coaching and then I incorporate the true quantum healing within it. So for example, I had a client um, a couple of weeks ago and we're going through some coaching questions and then we just shifted to true quantum healing. So it just resonated, okay, let me bring in the true quantum healing now. And um, we just worked on the specific problem there and then, and it was just removed energetically through true quantum healing. And the same thing, I guess, would apply with business coaching. So I would guess, 
something that might, or an issue that might come forth with business coaching would be somebody maybe that lacks confidence in their ability to maybe to get promoted, um, right, to get a new job and so on. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of stress, a lot of fear, anxiety, um, just doing different clearance energetically, you know, law of attraction. Everybody talks about law of attraction, so we can work on that as well. So yeah, a lot of a lot of work can be done with true quantum healing. It's it's amazing. It can cover every problem and any problem. Um, I've worked on land, I've worked on towns, I've worked on people's houses, people's workplaces. So it, it's amazing what can be done with it. Okay, now yeah. you held up the, the sacred geometry tool before, but it wasn't really in frame. I just saw a piece of it. Could you explain it a little bit? Yeah, so this is the Vesica Pisces. It's the sacred geometry tool that I use. So um, the Vesica Pisces is this spear or almond shape here. Um, I also have two pyramids base to base within it. And then I also have a sun ring. So the sun ring is platinum and then the um, Vesica Pisces and pyramids are coated in gold. So this acts as an amplifier and a conductor of energy. So it allows the healer to go to deeper levels and then it also protects me during healing as well. Sometimes healers, you know, they take on the problems of what they're working on. So this gives me a layer of protection and it absorbs the impact. So um, sacred geometry, it's everywhere around us. It's in our bodies, it's out in nature. Um, if you look at Washington from an aerial view, you will see the Vesca Pisces shape. And then um, you'll see, I can't remember, but that tall white, um, building, the Washington Monument. Washington Monument, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually sitting in a Vesca Pisces shape. So there's a whole long history, occult history, you know, going back to that. But um, it's everywhere around us. It's in advertising, company logos. Um, the Vesca Pisces shape is actually in MasterCard logo. It's in Chanel, Dolce & Gabbana, um, Bloomingdale's. It's in many different um, logos. So sacred geometry is everywhere around us. It's just we're not taught about it in school, you know, right. TV and it's not something, you know, we're taught about on a daily basis. So it's just that information that has been cut off or hidden from us, but it is everywhere around us. Um, it does carry a frequency. So for whatever reason, um, advertisers use it in their logos for one reason, but within healing, I use it to amplify the healing within the client and allow it to go to deeper levels and then protect me as well. Okay, so does the um, does it actually remove energy? Let's say this is energy that's not healthy. Does it take it out? But does it also put in good energy? In other words, is it multi-directional? You know, goes both ways, or does it just take out? Okay, yeah. So there's a couple of different factors in this. So when I use the sacred geometry tools, I'm also using my words and intent. So that's very important as well. Um, just our words are my intent to heal and remove the problem. So when, let's say, for example, there was a E. coli bacteria within a client's small intestine, I, I just say within the client's small intestine, E. coli bacteria falls. So that removes the frequency of the E. coli bacteria. But then after I remove a problem, I say for that area, true. So I would say within the client's small intestine, true and that raises the frequency of their small intestine. So once okay. we remove a problem, then it's kind of like we heal the area. Okay, I see. That so you, you, you're taking out first, taking out, and then putting back in. So you're taking out, in. okay. Yeah, okay. so taking the problem out and then raising the vibration of the area so it can function at a higher level. That's very interesting because in hypnosis, that's exactly what we do. So when we, when we are working with a client and we are releasing an issue, resolving a conflict, we have to make sure that we put back. Because if you don't put back, then what happens is the mind senses that something is missing because something used to be there. Whether it was good or not, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just the mind knows that something used to be there and now it kind of feels a little awkward or things seem a little out of place. So you have to make sure that you put something back in and what you put back in is the good stuff. It replaces the bad stuff. Exactly, yeah. And then it raises the vibration of the area and then it's functioning at a higher level. So, you know, that energy, you know, is going to be fully gone and it can't come back. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Now, are there any, uh, are there any clients 
that you have had. Not, I'm talking about their issues, not their their names, <laughs> not them personally. Yeah. But um, issues that stick in your mind that you think about it and you say, you know, that was very good. In other words, they came in with something that maybe that they thought, you know, was going to be something that they would have to live with for a long time. Um, you know, modern medicine, uh, Western medicine was not helping them. But after they came to you, they walked away a, a healthier, better person. Oh, yeah. Um, many different examples and just different levels of problems. Um, one example could be addiction. So, um, you know, a particular client had went to many different um, alternative uh, modalities and the addiction would go away for a little while, but then it'd come back. Um, she tried different things. And then um, she contacted me regarding True Quantum Healing. And after two sessions, her addiction was completely gone. So she's always, the client always felt the urge to drink and couldn't control it, even no matter how, you know, hard she tried. So just two sessions of True Quantum Healing removed many different layers. And um, yeah, so probably eight months later, 10 months later and still the problem gone. And, you know, that's interesting because um, that's a tough one um, for Western medicine and counselors and, and therapists to um, to be able to get people to come off of addiction. It's very, very difficult. And um, I can tell you that in my own practice, I've worked with folks, too, and I've had uh, quite a bit of success in getting people to uh, to remove themselves from those addictions or those vices. So it doesn't surprise me at all that you doing the energy work are able to accomplish what you just took us through. It's so interesting to me that the work that you do and others like yourself, um, it's, it's just really not, it's not out there. It's not something that is, um, that is marketed to the masses. Uh, of course, everything that's marketed to them is Western medicine. It's about going to to get drugs or it's about surgery because that's what Western medicine is really about About at the end of the day. That is two components to it, you know, to kind of, if you boil it down, it's it's surgery and drugs. That, that's really what it is. And uh, and also then you have the, you know, the, uh, the traditional types of counseling and therapies and, and stuff like that. Not that that's bad stuff. I'm just, I'm just saying that it could take a long time uh, to be able to work through a lot of these issues where with some of the alternative health and wellness modalities, you can really uh, truncate the amount of time that you're investing in, in trying to clear yourself from an addiction as an example, right? So one of the questions that I did want to ask you is uh, how many sessions in general uh, does a client have to um, come in for, or if you do it remotely via Skype, do they have to attend in order to be able to see benefit? I'm assuming it depends upon the person and the issue, but I was wondering if you could fill us in on that a little bit. Yeah, so it does depend on the individual and then how long they've had a problem. So sometimes chronic problems can take more sessions. Um, we've had great success in just, you know, removing a um, a problem with just one session and sometimes we work on many different problems in one session so it depends on the client what the problem is and then how long they've had it so usually we recommend two to three sessions for the client just to see you know a big improvement and okay. gives enough time to remove enough layers but even just in one session like for example the client with addiction was only two sessions you know, and I worked on that particular client in different problems as well. And, you know, 10 months later, she's returning and coming back to me because she sees the success and she sees the changes and the differences. And the big thing is that the clients can feel the difference. You know, there's no test, you know, just to, right. okay, Nicola, what tests do you have just to um, see, you know, is the problem gone? They actually feel the problem. They can feel the heart problem gone. They know their addiction is gone. They can feel the pain gone from their joints. Um, their migraines are gone, so um, that's how the clients can feel it as well, yeah. Okay, so addiction, like I said, it's, it's one of those things that from a traditional um, health perspective is can be very challenging to overcome. Have there been 
any types of diseases uh, that you've been able to help clients with that from a traditional medical perspective, uh, you know, might be something that the client was told that uh, is not something that they're going to be able to overcome or you're going to have to be on medication for the rest of your life. Have you, does uh, an example come to mind where you work with somebody where they were told those types of things, but after they came to see you, they don't have to take medication for the rest of their life as an example. Um, oh yeah, yeah, many different, just like for pain, physical pain, um, painkillers are a big problem nowadays, opioids. So just for physical pain, um, for example, um, a client with muscle pain, joint pain, um, their doctor could tell them, okay, you have arthritis, there's nothing we can do for it here, here's a pill. And you know, that's how they treat it and it works for some people. Um, but clients that come to me, an example of what that problem could be would be leaky gut. So the pain is in their muscles and their joints, but where the problem is actually the root of the problem is within their gut. So there's leaks and holes and breaches within their ascending and descending colons. And then um, bacterial toxins, bowel toxins are leaking into their body and causing pain. So just by you know removing all the toxins, healing up the gut energetically, because we use healing energies as well, we use quantum cells of life, um, stem cells. So it's amazing what I can do. And then once all that is healed up and the different problems removed from their body, then their joint pain goes away and muscle pain goes away and they don't have to take the pill anymore. So um, same for um, different heart problems. Worked on clients for um, just racing heart, beating heart, palpitations, um, pain. So there's oh many, many different examples, yeah. Okay, that's very good. That's very good. Um, I'm a firm believer in holistic, uh, approaches to health and wellness and um, like I mentioned before the problem is is that um, information is not readily available in other words um, like if you want to if you want to learn something about um, traditional Western medicine it's not hard to go to websites like WebMD and the Mayo Clinic and stuff like that to go get the lowdown on you know whatever whether it be the drugs or the the symptoms the disorder the disease so in other words, it's, it's, it's packaged very nicely. But for us, for you and I, and, and people who do work like us, um, it's kind of spread out there. And the, the person who is a potential client really has to do a lot of hunting and pecking and research, right, in order to kind of bring things together. That's what I have found. In other words, there's no, they don't want us to have a cohesive approach to alternative wellness and, and health. Uh, I, I think, and this is my opinion, you may not agree with me, but I, I think it's intentionally made difficult for folks that are suffering from health issues to learn more about the types of work that we do. And many times we're just chalked up as, uh, you know, it's just out there, wild, quackery stuff. In the meantime, we're actually helping people. Yeah, that's it. And the majority of clients have to go looking for it. It's not something like you said is ready available. You know, you turn on your TV and you see advertisements about um, drugs, different forms of drugs. You see it everywhere, but you, you don't see anything about energy healing and what it can do and frequency and vibration and raising the vibration of your body. So a lot of clients have to go looking for it. And usually when people are in enough trouble and the medical route is not working for them or they're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then they look for an alternative. And, um, you know, it's a healing journey on their own, just going down that path. So, and this is becoming more common. I see a big change of people looking for other ways to help them. Yeah, yeah. Now, something I want to touch on, and maybe some of the listeners are waiting for us to talk about it, so we will talk about it. Um, the whole energetic aspect of this, again, with Western medicine, what happens is they never talk about uh, the energy. They never talk about the fact that... Um, there is something other than the physical body that can be at play. Uh, Western medicine focuses on the physical body, and they look at the body as very similar to how a auto mechanic would look at a car. It's a vehicle, and they never look outside of uh, of the physical body for solutions. So, in my practice, we call it, or I call it, transpersonal hypnosis, which means beyond the person beyond the body. So we introduce aspects, spiritual aspects into the equation. And when you do this, when you bring in the 
spiritual aspects or you bring in maybe some people don't like the word spiritual we can call it uh, aspects of expanded consciousness and you actually increase the number of tools in your toolbox where you're able to to use to help the client to feel better or to overcome something or to resolve a conflict now I know you and I spoke about this a little bit when we talked I guess about two or three weeks ago but um, one of the things that I can do and people are probably thinking he's a lot weirder than we thought is I can see auras and uh, if I'm in a crowd somewhere or I'm in a group I can see the aura around somebody and usually typically it's around the shoulder area up uh, around the head and a an aura which is healthy is very radiant and it has a very bright color to it like a yellow or a lime green you know, um, or a bright white with a blue hue to it but an aura that is damaged uh, doesn't have that radiance it doesn't have those bright colors it it actually is kind of a gray color and it hangs low to the body it's not radiating it's basically uh, suppressed and so what I learned from actually being able to to see that because I, like I said I can see auras uh, is that there is an energetic component to this there is something going on and and uh, folks that have auras that are very healthy generally speaking are people themselves who are very healthy mentally physically emotionally not to say we don't have our bumps in the road but generally speaking you're pretty happy camper going through life you're able to manage life properly and you know the road is like I said might have a couple of bumps but there's a lot of smooth surface to drive on but folks who have auras that are not healthy they tend to have uh, a lot of challenges and issues in their life this has been my experience and also I found that in the work that I do that they're especially their the lower chakras are way out of alignment uh, especially the root chakra which is the very first chakra at the base of your spine that, that's a radiates a was supposed to radiate a red color so the reason why I'm setting this up is because I know that uh, based upon you and I talking previously that you have come across uh, energies which are not healthy right there's there might be uh, negative energy that latches on to uh, a person and I was I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about that uh, what has your experience been with negative energy being introduced into somebody's into somebody's person whether it be to the physical body or even their energetic field and essentially distorting it or making it unhealthy yeah so um you mentioned the aura and within the charts here we have like 70 to 80 different areas within the aura listed out so um i would that was to find out where the problem is within the client's aura um but yeah like negative energies do play a big part as well um and a lot of problems there's always a physical component and an energetic component um within a problem within a client so those two areas have to be removed in order for the health problem to completely go away but um within the aura itself yeah like i work a lot within the aura um within the source or self consciousness um third eye chakras in our chart we have um 14 different chakras and within each chakra there's seven different layers so we get down very deep into where the problem is and um, different types of negative energies do play a problem so it's just a matter of identity and uh, sorry of identifying that negative energy and universal laws once you identify it and ask it to leave you know that negative energy component has to leave so it's all frequency and vibration again I've had experiences uh, with my work it doesn't happen very often but they have definitely happened where these negative energies uh, could be in the form of um, entities or beings that have attached themselves to somebody um, and so I'm not trying to put you on the spot here I'm, I'm saying that I have experienced this myself with clients that I have worked with so have you run across things like attachments where an energy has attached itself to somebody oh, oh yeah yeah and I every client I've worked on there's been energetic attachments so they do exist um, it's just it's 
I describe it as an unseen world around us. We can't yes. see these energies, but they do exist. Um, the analogy that I use is if you're in a dark room and you shine a light and all you can see is that area of the light, there's a whole lot of area of that room that you don't see. And um, that's like how I describe um, these negative energies. We can't see it, but they do exist. And um, they do latch on to different areas um, of the client's body. So if there's a problem within the client's liver, you know, the physical problem could be a virus, but then there's actually an energy attachment. So I have charts here and we have loads of different names in here to describe that particular energy. So I douse and it's assigned a name, let's say. And then, you know, you have to identify it by a particular name. And then once I identify what energy it is, then I just um, remove it with the Vesica Pisces and that energy is removed and I send it off to Ether. Okay. Yeah. And then again, just heal up that area by saying true. So. Have you ever had situations where that negative energy uh, was recalcitrant, in it, meaning it, it really was really pushing back? about releasing and, and, and leaving, that it was entrenched? Yeah, that can happen. Um, a lot of times we have to remove other different layers and layers upon layers to actually get to that one negative energy because just that negative entity could be keeping that problem within the client. Um, you could remove the physical component and you know you um, balanced our chakras and but if that entity is not removed then the problem keeps recurring. So sometimes, yeah, like um. I will feel when when the problem is gone, I feel it within my gut. That's my sore self. So when I'm removing a problem, I can feel the release there. Some people will feel a pull on the Vesca Pisces, like my client, or sorry, my mentor, Chris, he will feel a pull on the Vesca Pisces, like a fishing line, but I feel it within my gut, my sore self. So once that energy is removed, I feel the release and then I know it's gone then. So okay. yeah, sometimes the, the pull will be stronger. Um, sometimes it just goes instantly. So it depends on the energy. And then a lot of it depends on, um, you know, different alignments. You know, after, let's say, certain energetic shifts, it's easier to remove some entities. They are, they're removed quicker. Okay. So when I talk about this, um, because folks will be asking, well, how do the negative energies get there? to begin with. And I'll, I'll give you my explanation and, and you can tell me whether you agree with it. And then I would like to obviously get your insights. Um, I explained to folks that the way they get there is that um, they look for uh, essentially cracks where they can, a little opening in which they can slip in. And so those cracks, in, in from based upon my experience, occur when somebody is uh, leading a life where there are a lot of vices, as an example, addiction being one, right? So if you're a heavy drinker, uh, if you're into drugs, uh, if you have uh, other types of addictions which are unhealthy, uh, if you have a lot of rage and anger and so on, these are all um, aspects uh, that will eventually put cracks in, in the door. And these negative energies, they wait for that. And as soon as that crack just opens up a little bit, that's their way of being able to slip in and then attaching themselves or housing themselves within that person's physical body, maybe even their, their mental mm -hmm. uh, body, right? So um, is, is that along the lines um, – or similar to how you view how these negative energies introduce themselves in, into a particular person? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's along the same lines. Um, people, you know, low in energy, they're vibrating at a lower level, going through emotional problems, stress in life. Um, even while people are sleeping, their guard is down. So there's an area within the body that we work on um, called a dream self and sleep self. So they can enter through there. Um, there's also such a thing as stargates and portals, you know, they exist and um, they can enter. It's like a doorway where they can enter through as well. And then just different traumas in life. Um, people, you know, drinking heavily, um, using a lot of drugs, their vibration is lower and these energies can enter that way as well. So there's many different ways they can enter. I find it very interesting that in our society and our culture, 
the activities that they would like us to participate in are all pretty much unhealthy, right? When you think about it, the food is not healthy. Uh, what we drink typically, unless you're, you know, really focused on making healthy choices, uh, is not healthy. There's fluoride in the water. There's aspartame in soft drinks. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's almost as if the environment in which we, we exist in, the realm that we exist in, is actually fostering those cracks in the door that I was talking about before. Um, it's very interesting to me. And to the degree that people can be wiser about the choices they make health-wise, which means what you take into your body, um, it's, it's uh, working out, being as fit as you possibly can. Uh, but it, there's also a very big component of this is the spiritual aspect of it, right? The spiritual disciplines and being connected back to spirit. This is how I explain it to friends and, and to some clients when we get into this conversation. So do you think too, or am I being too conspiratorial <laughs> that the environment in which we operate in has a lot of negative influences and negative inputs into our mind, body, soul connection? Oh yeah, there's a lot of programming out there, for, you know, everything we see on TV on what to eat and what to do and entertainment, none of it is really healthy. It's, right. you know, adults acting like children, let's say in a sense. Um, but, um, oh yeah, from the water, um, the water supply is not healthy. You know, it's just basically the same water recirculated back and forth and, you know, it's dead water basically. Uh, so just anybody trying, you know, go to um, findaspring.com and you'll be able to find a local spring in your area. It's a great tool, findaspring.com, anyone looking for healthier water. Um, the food supply, oh yeah, it's, you know, like you said, aspartame, um, all different additives, GMOs are a big problem. Um, even just GMO apples now, GMO salmon. Yes. You really have to, you know, do your homework and know exactly what you're buying and stay away from packaged food, the amount of additives in it, the amount of soy, amount of GMOs is, is ridiculous in food nowadays. Um, there's a big movement for GMO labeling. Um, so it's like a trade-off, oh, GMO should be labeled, but they shouldn't be there in the first place. So it's kind of like, what are people willing to accept? It's like we're given a bone, label GMOs, and we have to fight for that. But it should be a basic human right to have, you know, good natural food, um, but we have to fight for that. So, and then even the air is polluted. Um, I know people talk about chemtrails and, you know, it's no big deal. It's just, you know, planes flying back. But I remember when I was younger and you'd see the jet stream and it just dissolves instantly. And now it's just lingering in the air for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And yeah, so even in my chart, chemtrail bacteria comes up. So clients that just have this niggling cough or cold that won't go away, I have chemtrail bacteria in it. Is that uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, other different issues like strontium, so it's just different um, heavy metals that are in um, chemtrails that comes up within clients. Yeah, so there's many different factors um, that clients could, um, you know, look at to get themselves healthier. Food, water, sleep is so underrated. It's free, <laughs> but the amount of healing it can do to the body, just getting to bed by 10.30 at night and getting that eight hours sleep because it goes through such... Um, you know, healing, regenerating cycles within that four hour time frame from 10.30 to 2.30. Yeah. Yeah, just moving, getting out and moving. Um, everybody's looking for, you know, the next diet fad, you know, that's what we're sold um, on TV. This diet is going to improve your health. Um, this exercise is going to improve your health. So you have to go looking for the information. If anyone is looking for um, a book or anything on how to get healthy, one that I would recommend is by Paul Check. I don't know if you're familiar with him, C -H -K, no. but the title of the book is called How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy. And it's absolutely amazing. So it treats you on an individual level. He doesn't feed you, oh, eat this or do this, but it identifies, you know, through a series of questionnaires, first of all, you know, how healthy the different areas of your body are, and then um, gives you different tools on how to improve your health and you know what food suits you so people could have a different um pattern type on the type of food you could eat so it's an amazing book and he's great videos out there on youtube as well 
So a whole holistic approach on how to get healthy, yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll put the links in the description box. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll do that. I'll also put the uh, the Chris Kaler interview that I did with Chris about a year ago. It's on my Mixcloud channel, so I'll put that in the description box also. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Nicola, that you'd like to talk about? Anything else that comes to mind or that uh, you wanted to get the audience to, uh, to understand a little bit more about? Um, regarding healing, yeah, just um, be open to the idea. I don't know um, how much of your audience, you know, I know you mentioned conspiracy, conspiratorial aspect, but how many of them, them are actually into alternative healing. But just be open if you're going through anything, any health problems, emotional, spiritual, um, just, you know, just do look into alternative methods and, you know, you'd be amazed at the results and how it can heal you. Yeah. Yes. So just no, be that... minded to it, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. So uh, there's a lot of excellent, excellent alternative healers that are practicing and their modalities, uh, you know, they may differ, but they're very, very dedicated to their work. And um, I have said this on a number of shows, Nicola, and I'll, I'll say it here on this show. The football field is 100 yards. And many people only focus on the the physical aspects of life and that's the first 50 yards of the football field right mm -hmm. and they play there their whole life they play 50 yards of football but there's another 50 yards of the football field that makes up the 100 yards that has to do with spirituality it has to do with us as energetic beings it has to do with metaphysics and if you are only playing half the field, then you are missing half your life mm -hmm. because our existence is both physical and spiritual. And so a lot of the work that you know, you're into and I'm into and many, many others helps to develop that spiritual aspect of us, to, to bring that awareness to us from a mind-body perspective that there are other ways and healthier ways less intrusive ways to be able to feel better and to overcome disease and disorders and issues in general. So, uh, so I tip my hat to you and my, all my other fellow alternative healers and practitioners for all the work that you guys are doing. It's, it's very good work. Oh yeah. It's more like a, a vocation. Um, <laughs> everybody is drawn to this type of work, but for me, um, you know, I was like, is the nine to five, is that all there is to life? Is that it? There has to be something more. So um, I was looking for something more. And when I came across True, Can True Quantum Healing, I knew instantly I'd found it. And I absolutely love it. Um, what it's done for me, my family, my clients, it's amazing what I can do. And if only more people knew about it, you know, how you can treat different problems, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, anything can be worked on. Um, houses, like I said, can be worked on land. I've done healing on Ireland, for example, and um, just such a high suicide rate there. So just like people, countries have their own chakra system. They have their own source um, and yeah. aura. Yeah. So it was just a lot of um, energetic problems removed out of there. So it's absolutely phenomenal what can be done. And I think times are changing. People are looking for alternative routes and their consciousness has risen and there's a shift and they are starting to go back to let's say the old ways yeah yeah all does it mean like, that it wasn't good <laughs> no no just means that um the way of doing things was, yes yeah was different yeah different and many times better now yes. nicola your website how do people get in contact with you you have to go to nicola kb.com n-i-c-o-l-a kb.com they'll be able to find me and they'll be able to reach my facebook page my youtube channel through there as well and if anybody has any questions has any questions about how this works um and want to talk to me about any problems they're going through just send me an email and i'll get back right to them now if somebody wants to come see you in person to do one-on-one -on -one work in your office you're out of boston yeah i'm in boston um a lot of my sessions the majority of them are through skype and phone but um, if anybody did want to meet in person, you know, it is an option as well. But it works the exact same way. It's energy. So it works the exact same way over phone and Skype as it does in person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, Nicola, this has been um, a fabulous discussion. I'm really glad that we connected and um, you can come back anytime to talk about whatever it is that uh, you'd like to talk about or any new discoveries with your work. I'd love to hear them. And I know the audience would love to hear it. And um, I think that'll be it. I'll try to get the uh, the show out as soon as I possibly can, because uh, I did let some folks know that uh, I was doing the show and they were very interested, especially my my friends in the alternative health field. They were very, very curious about and inquisitive about us doing this show. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Mike, for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Excited, yeah. And that concludes another Sage of Quay interview, and I hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as I did. Links to my guests, websites, and social media are listed in the show notes below. And as always, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and visiting the blog. You can get to the blog by typing in sageofquayradio.blogspot.com or simply head over to our hub website at sageofquay.com. Also, if you get a moment, please visit laboroflovemusic.com to listen to my album, Leaving Dystopia. And remember, live in truth and always serve creation. It's really that simple. See everyone next week. Be safe, enjoy, and God bless.